Welcome to Python Basics Dictionaries. Maybe you've already learned about lists and tuples in Python, and in this course, you'll get to know dictionaries, which is another super useful data structure in Python. Dictionaries are used frequently for solving all kinds of programming problems, so they are a fundamental piece of your toolkit as a Python developer. I'm Philip with Real Python, and today we'll talk about dictionaries. During this course, you'll be using IDLE, which stands for Integrated Development and Learning Environment. IDLE comes with most Python distributions out of the box. If you need a quick refresher on using IDLE, then check out one of our video courses in the Python Basic series entitled Setting up Python. Alternatively, if you want to take a deeper dive, then you may watch the Starting with Python IDLE video course. Of course, you can use any other editor of your choice, but if you want to follow along closely, it's a good idea to stick with IDLE for this video course. In this course, you'll learn all the basics that you need to know about dictionaries. Here is a table of contents for this course. Currently, you're in the overview lesson. Next, I'll give you a short introduction to what a dictionary is, and then you'll learn how to create a dictionary and work with them. I'll show you how to access values and how to add and remove values. Sometimes you're not sure what's in a dictionary. So in lesson five, you'll learn how to check for the existence of dictionary keys. Dictionaries are iterable. That means you can loop over them. You'll do this so often in your programming life that it's worth its own lesson in this course, lesson six. If you can't get enough of dictionaries, how about adding a dictionary to a dictionary? I'll show you how to nest dictionaries in lesson seven. Lesson eight is a special lesson. In this lesson, I'll give you a challenge to test your knowledge about Python dictionaries. We'll wrap up this course with a summary about all the things you learned and I'll send you off with links to a bunch of helpful resources that you can find on Real Python. Okay, let's get started. The best way of introducing a dictionary is actually showing to work with it. Still, I want to give a little bit of more theoretical introduction to Python dictionaries. I promise this lesson is super short. In plain English, a dictionary is a book containing the definition of words. Each entry in a dictionary has two parts the word being defined and its definition. So here you have the word dog and the definition, a mammal with sharp teeth, an excellent sense of smell and a fine sense of hearing. You also use a dictionary when you want to translate a word. So for example, the English word dog is the German word Hund. Another way of thinking of a dictionary is to think of it more like a form. For example, if you have a form for my dog, the name is Frida and the age is five. On the right side, you see the data structure my dog translated into a Python dictionary. Don't worry so much about the syntax right now. I just wanted to show you how a dictionary looks in Python. You will get into the details in the next lessons. Python dictionaries, like lists and tuples, store a collection of objects. Each object in a dictionary has two parts, a key and a value. Instead of storing objects in a sequence like lists or tuples do, dictionaries hold information in pairs of data called key value pairs. The key in a key value pair is a unique name that identifies the value part of the pair. So here you've got the dictionary my underscore dog with name Frida as an object and age five as an object. The keys are name and age and the values are Frida and five. In this lesson, I'll show you how to create a dictionary in Python. Python dictionaries like lists and tuples store a collection of objects. However, instead of storing objects in a sequence, dictionaries hold information in pairs of data called key value pairs. The key in a key value pair is a unique name that identifies the value part of the pair. For example, you could use a dictionary to store the names of states and their capitals. In this table, the keys of the dictionary are the names of the states and the values of the dictionary are the names of their capitals. In Python, this dictionary would look like this. A dictionary in Python is enclosed in curly braces. Each key is separated from its value by a colon. 
and each key value pair is separated by a comma. Let's hop over to the idle shell to explore this data structure a bit more. Again, a dictionary is enclosed by curly braces. So when I type capitals equals opening curly brace and closing curly brace, I just created a dictionary. To validate that capitals is a dictionary, you can check its type with type opening parentheses capitals closing parentheses. So this just was an empty dictionary. Let's create a new dictionary with the three capitals from the example before. So again, let's write capitals equals opening curly brace and then California colon Sacramento comma New York colon Albany comma Texas colon Austin comma and closing with a curly brace again. So there you see all the key value pairs. The key California has the value Sacramento, and the key New York has the value Albany, and the key Texas has the value Austin. All of them are strings. With this code, you created a dictionary literal containing names of states and their capitals. You can also create a dictionary from a sequence of tuples using the built-in dict function. Let's create a sequence of tuples first. This time, let's get a bit more personal and use my dog Frida in this example. I named this tuple my underscore dog, and this tuple contains four inner tuples. The first one is name, comma, Frida. The second one, age, comma, five. That's an integer five. The third one, nicknames, comma, and then let's create a list. The first nickname of Frida is Fru Fru, and the second nickname is Lady McNugget. And the fourth item of the tuple list is hungry, comma, true. So that's a Boolean here. So as you can see, we have a tuple object containing four inner tuples that not only contain strings as the second item in the tuple, but also an integer, a list, and a Boolean. When you pass in my underscore doc as an argument for the dict function, then Python creates a dictionary out of the sequence of tuples. In the example of the capitals, all values were strings, but here the values are also an integer, a list, and a boolean. This has nothing to do with the dict function that you used, that's a feature of dictionaries in general. Values of dictionaries can have any valid Python type. Okay, but what about keys then? So far, all the dictionary keys we've worked with were strings. However, there is no rule that dictionary keys must be all strings. Even more, they don't even have to be the same type. You can use strings, integers, floats, booleans, and tuples as dictionary keys. And there are some more data types that you can use as dictionary keys, but as this is a Python basics course, let's stay basic for now. One thing that all these data types have in common is that they are immutable. That means once they are created, you cannot change the value of an element that they contain. So immutable data types are allowed as keys. Not allowed are mutable data types like lists and dictionaries as keys for Python dictionaries. If you try to create a dictionary with a mutable type like a list, then Python will throw a type error and say that your key is not hashable. In other words, Python must know exactly what to look for when you're accessing a dictionary. Which is a great segue to the next lesson. In this lesson, you learned how to create a dictionary and which data types are allowed to be used as keys and values. In the next lesson, you'll learn how to access dictionary values. In the last lesson, you created your own dictionaries. Now I'll show you how to access, add, change, and delete dictionary values. In this session, we will work with the MyDoc dictionary again. If you have closed your session from the last window, pause this video and recreate the dictionary as you can see it right here. You can also find the code in the description below or in the materials we are adding to this video course. So when you type MyDoc, you should have the same output as you can see on the screen. 
name, colon, Frida, age five, nicknames with a list of Fru Fru and Lady McNugget, and also the key hungry with the value true. So every time you want to see the whole dictionary, you can just let Python output the dictionary for you. But if you don't want to see the whole dictionary, then you can access the values directly. Here you know that there is the key name in the MyDoc dictionary. This means you can type my dog square brackets and then name. Don't forget the quotes around name because you're referring to a string. So as you can see, here you can access the name directly and Python outputs Frida, which is the name of my dog. When you want to add a new key value pair to the dictionary, then you can use a similar notation. Let's also add information about my dog's breed to the dictionary. So again, it's my underscore dog, then square brackets. This time let's put breed as a string. This will be the key. And the value is also a string with the content poodle, because my dog is a poodle. If you have a look at the my dog dictionary now, and then you can see that breed poodle was added at the end of the dictionary. Oh, and by the way, prior to Python 3.6, the order of key value pairs in a Python dictionary was unpredictable. In later versions, the order of the key value pairs is guaranteed to match the order in which they were inserted. So if you happen to following along with a Python version older than 3.6, then you'll notice that the output of dictionaries in general will be different than what you're seeing here. Okay, now let's change a value in the MyDoc dictionary. Again, the syntax looks exactly the same, except you're using a key that already exists in the square brackets. So currently, Frida's age is five. Let's say today is her birthday. Happy birthday, Frida. <laughs> then you can change the value by writing my dog h in square brackets equals six. When we have a look at the complete dictionary again, then you see that the h is now six in the dictionary. This worked because each key in a dictionary can be assigned only a single value. That means when a key is given a new value, then Python overwrites the old one. If you want to remove a key value pair from a dictionary, you can use the del keyword. Okay, so we access a value with the key, we created a new key value pair, and we changed a value. Now it's time to show you how to remove a key value pair from a dictionary. To remove a key value pair, you can use the del keyword. We can assume that my dog is always hungry, or at least that's what she tells me. So let's remove this item from the my dog dictionary. When we let Python output the my dog dictionary, then you can see that hungry true is now not part of the dictionary anymore. Oh, and one important note before we wrap up this lesson, don't forget to actually add the square brackets with the key to the dictionary name if you want to delete a key value pair. If you would only write del my dog, then you would delete the whole dictionary. This can be handy sometimes, but that's not what we want to do right now. So again, with del, my dog, and the key hungry in square brackets, we deleted the key value pair for hungry. If you now try to access the item, then you'll get a key error. The key error is probably the most common error that you will encounter when working with dictionaries. In the next lesson, we'll explore how to prevent running into this error by checking if a key in a dictionary exists first before accessing it.